we are about to start. I think we are just in time. Uh, let me see. Let me set up everything. I'm going to start sharing my screen. So great. Let me see entire screen. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to start with the topic today. Uh, it's great to be here again. I, I think like last time was two months ago, and we were talking about full stack apps with Dart. In this case, the topic is slightly, well, no, it's not that different because we are going to talk about uh, a full stack app with Dart. But uh, in particular, we are going to center the conversation to gRPC and how we can uh, like use this technology in in Dart, in a, in, in, in a Flutter project, in a full stack app using Flutter and Dart in the server. So yeah, the title of today is Powering Your Flutter Apps uh, with gRPC. So, so yeah, before starting, let me introduce a little bit about myself. Uh, so I'm Gianfranco Papa and I'm CTO and co-founder uh, at Somnio Software. Um, basically, we are a, a dev shop uh, who specialize in Flutter. We are 100% specialized in Flutter. And, and yeah, um, I mean, I'm a software engineer uh, and who specializes in, in Flutter development, of course. And yeah, I really love this technology. And lately, I'm also being a speaker of Flutter uh, in different events. I uh, This is not my first time here, as I was telling you. Like, uh, I recently talked about uh, full stack apps in Dart. And also, I'm organizer of Flutter Montevideo uh, meetup uh, that is in Uruguay, Uruguay where I live. Uh, yeah, the idea is like to help uh, increase in uh, the community in not only in Uruguay but in Latin America and the world. Uh, this is really yeah, really great. So okay, um, what we are talking uh, about uh, today. So here's the agenda, real simple. We have like an introduction to gRPC in case you don't know this technology. That's why I brought the slides, but uh, then we are going to talk about protocol buffers because it's, it is somehow connected to gRPC. Uh, we are going to see in, in depth, but uh, it's basically uh, as the JSON for the REST APIs, if you are more familiar with those kinds of uh, technology. And then we are going to have a brief demo about how to use Flutter and gRPC in a project, uh, in a sample project, really basic, but so you can um, like understand what will be the, the, the way to work and how is the integration. And uh, finally, we will have like some conclusions about uh, the whole topic and next steps. Okay. So yeah, remember anytime you, if you have any questions, put it on, on the Q and A, and and then at the at the end of the maybe at the end of the demo or the conclusions, maybe I will go over all the questions and hopefully we can chat about uh, what we did. So so awesome. Okay, so let's start first by defining what is gRPC because I think that it's not so. Uh, well known as other protocols such as um, like traditional API REST. Uh, so basically, gRPC is a modern open source, high performance remote procedure call framework that can run in any environment. This is like the actual definition uh, that you will find in the documentation. So what we can see about this is like it is open source. Uh, it, it was made by Google and then open source later. Um, it is a high performance remote procedure call. So we are talking about uh, this protocol that is called RPC. Uh, and this protocol uh, is another protocol like many others. Uh, it has like uh, its advantages, its pros and cons, but you can think about like as it is another uh, protocol such as uh, REST, uh, HTTP, right? Or WebSockets or GraphQL. GraphQL. And, and yeah, the, the whole idea of, the, of RPC and gRPC in this case that we are going to see is to try to call a function that normally resides on the server as if we were calling it on the client's machine. So we are, what we are going to see is that when we uh, present the demo in Flutter, we are going to start making uh, calls into a function that is in the server as if uh, we have it like in the Flutter app. And that's really nice because we don't have to establish a, a communication 
uh, I, I mean, if you are used to work with HTTP, you know, like you have to uh, have like different calls uh, with different bars, maybe a get, a post, a, a put or a delete. And then that information will be parsing in a JSON and so on. So uh, the idea of having an RPC is just, just to call the function as we as if we were calling it like uh, uh, locally, right? So uh, one of the main advantages of gRPC uh, in comparison with other protocols like HTTP uh, is that we can do client-side, server-side, and bidirectional streaming. We are not only going to be able to call a function and have a response, but also we can start sending messages from the client or receiving messages from the server. Uh, and maybe also both. So it, uh, uh, it would be a bidirectional communication back and forth between the client and the server. So this can unleash like a lot of uh, use cases that are really cool. And, and yeah, as these things uh, like gRPC has, uh, has many other advantages, but this I think is one of the most uh, important ones. Okay, so this is like a normal architecture or example that we can are going to, to use. Uh, hopefully we, we are going to see everything in action, but in, in this diagram, we can see that we have uh, a gRPC server in the, in the image, we can see that we are using C++, but in, in our case, we are going to use Dart. Uh, and then we have different clients that can be written in any language um, that are communicating with uh, the server uh, using uh, protocol buffers. So the thing is that we, we're going to see uh, right now what a protocol buffer is, but uh, the clients will send proto requests and then the server will answer with a proto response. And this is really cool because even though we are going to only use Dart uh, and in the clients we're going to use Flutter, um, you can, by using a protocol buffer, you can potentially use any uh, language because the, the protocol buffers are, are language agnostic. And, and yeah, uh, this will be more or less the flow that we are going to follow. Okay, so now, yes, and uh, we have to talk about, uh, about a little bit more about uh, protocol buffers. Uh, the short is protobuf. So basically, uh, protobuf are a uh, language ne neutral, platform neutral, extensible mechanism for serializing structured data. Uh, so, yeah, as I was saying, like it will be like the JSON for the REST API. Uh, the protocol buffers will be like the way gRPC send information back and forth. And the cool thing about this is that it is language agnostic. So that, that would mean that uh, we only have to have a single definition. And in the image, we can see an example of a message that is the, the reserve keyword for defining mainly a class. Uh, you could also have um, imagine the person as a struct in, in other languages, but it would be like the, the message that I want to send uh, through the wire. And in this case, we are defining a person uh, who has a name, an ID, and an email. And this is basically the, the notations that we have to follow. We have to learn like how to define the, the proper message. But once we do it, uh, we will be able to auto-generate this message, message uh, in any uh, programming language that obviously supports protocol buffers. Uh, but are like a lot of them, and uh, one of them is Dart. So we are going to have a single definition of our models and services. We're going to see what are services. But the what I would like to for you to keep in mind is that we are only defining classes uh, once because we are using protocol buffers. And then, even though we are only using Dart in this example, in this case, we are going to reuse those classes both in the client in, and in the server. So that's nice. So you don't have to write that classes um, twice, right? But I mean, as we are using only Dart, you wouldn't have to do it anyways. But the cool thing is that if you start having more things, uh, for example, in the server, if you have like microservices and each, each, each service is using uh, different languages, this is something really common because uh, especially in microservice architectures, uh, you only only have to define once your uh, protobuf. That's really nice. 
so yeah, this is a, a common flow with uh, that we have to follow uh, when working with protocol buffers. So the whole idea is to create the proto file that we are going to see, and that will define the the data structure in your proto file. This will serve as an input to uh, out output different uh, classes in your programming language of choice. In our case, Dart, and uh, yeah, we are going to use the Proto C compiler to grab those Proto files and convert it into Dart classes. And then we are going to export those classes and, and put it as part of our packages or for our server or, uh, or our front end. And that um, flow is really, really nice to, to follow because, uh, as I said, you only have like a single source of truth for your models and services. And that's it. Uh, whenever you, you make some changes, you will auto-generate again your classes. And you don't have to write so many classes in, in Dart or any programming language in terms of like the data that you are going to have or even methods such as copy with, right? So, so perfect. Uh, okay, so great. Uh, we are going to see the demo right now. Uh, so if you have, remember, if you have any questions so far, leave it on, on the Q&A. Great. And um, maybe we can answer like the one question that Miller, before starting the demo, that Miller uh, asked, and then we can jump into the demo. So comparing to WebSockets, the number of connections at same time are similar, working with streams. Um, I, I guess that the question would be, maybe Miller, if you would like to uh, clarify, but compare, yeah. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, when we uh, work you, uh, with WebSockets, we have that limit to maybe uh, look for the server with the peers. I don't know if in GRPC, uh, we have the chance to work with more people at the same time. Right. I don't know if, if it's a improvement of this technology or it depends on the server. I really don't know, just think about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice question. I mean, uh, I mean naturally, I think uh, you are thinking about WebSockets because as we uh, explained in the in the slides, uh, this technology allows you to do server-side streaming so yes. uh, and bi-directional streaming. So in a way, WebSockets is also the same. We can push messages to the server and the server can push messages to the client. And the thing about WebSockets is that, yeah, we could have an instance of our server uh, having multiple clients and server multiple, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, WebSockets. And in this case, we could have an instance of our gRPC uh, server that is connecting and establishing a communication with, again, uh, multiple clients. So it's, it's similar. Um, I, I would say that maybe um, you could you could say that that will be depend ultimately on the infrastructure that you are deploying everything. For example, if we go for a, a deployment of our server in maybe uh, Cloud Run, that is something really common, um, you will have to set uh, essentially like what are the maximum number of connections you could handle uh, for a given instance. And then, if uh, that number is uh, um, rich, you can start a new instance and start serving like other clients uh, at the same time. But yeah, uh, I think that this this is one of like probably the advanced topics uh, that we are not going to cover today. We are going to cover mostly the communication between the client and the server. But yeah, once you start scaling this to um, more clients, you will have to take in consideration that if you're scaling your server horizontally, uh, you will need to manage like synchronizations between instances if needed, right? Uh, if not, uh, it doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, scaling the server it can be uh, vertical and that will potentially unleash you like more connections at the same time or it could be horizontally. So you, you have like uh, more instances of your server running uh, at the same time. So yeah, it's it's a little bit similar to WebSockets, uh, but uh, the thing about WebSockets is that yeah, you still have that communication 
uh, in a way uh, where you're passing messages and this uh, type of uh, connection, we're going to see it, but it's uh, fully typed. So whenever you auto-generate your server, you're going to call the function as if you have it locally available. And in WebSockets, you still need to send messages to, the, to a channel and then listen to them. OK, so hope I, I, I answer the question. I'm going to zoom a little bit. Uh, let me know, guys, if you, got, if you can see it well or I can. OK, thank you. Sure. Um, so yeah, here uh, in the demo, I would like to um, present a full stack app with Dart and gRPC. So uh, you could see that we have three dis different folders. On one hand, we, we have uh, the Protos folder. That is the first one we are going to explore. And then we have our client and our server. Uh, our client will be written using Flutter and our server will be written using Dart. So we are we are sticking like uh, as uh, using one language, uh, Dart. But uh, yeah, this could be any language that it supports gRPC. So the first one uh, that I would like to show is the uh, Protos package. This is a pure Dart package. And yeah, um, I know if you're, you're familiar with pure Dart packages, but this is really common. We have like our changelog, our passpec YAML, our readme, our, our linter. Uh, so if we go to our passpec YAML, uh, you will notice that we have like two different dependencies, gRPC and protobuf, that are essentially what we need to work with protocol buffers. And here, what we have is our to do that pro that I, I wrote uh, before the demo because yeah, we have limited time. So I wanted to cover like a lot of, a lot of the points. So basically here we have uh, what we were uh, seeing in the slides. And uh, we have a definition of a message here. So this will be what we want to uh, communicate uh, uh, between the client and the server. In this case, I have an example that we are mainly sending <coughs> to those to our client. Uh, and yeah, in our message, we can see that we have an ID, a title, and whether or not the to do is completed. And then we have a get to do by ID request. So basically, this is something that uh, I didn't explain before. But when working with gRPC and protocol buffers, we can define services that will be essentially like uh, all of the methods that we would like to call from the client to, to the server, right? So this will be more or less like an interface that we need to implement later uh, as well. And in this case, we have two different methods. On one hand, we have like a get to do. And remember that the client needs to send a request as well that will be a proto uh, message. So that's why we define also a message. Um, this could be like more or less, um, um, I guess that we are writing more boilerplate code because we need to actually send a, a request and for any of the request, we need to specify a message. But remember that we are only using this in a single file, and then we are going to auto-generate, and we are going to see all of the advantages. So in this case, this is a unary, unary call, meaning that uh, from the client, I'm going to get something from the server, and that's it. The communication uh, will be closed at that time if we want. And in this case, we are returning a simple to-do. So basically, when, whenever we call the get to-do and sending a, a, the ID of the request, we are going to, to send a to-do. This will be um, like having, a, um, for example, in a REST API, a get endpoint that we can um, uh, call it like to-dos by ID, right? So in this, in this case, we also have another method that will be get to-do stream. And in this case, uh, this is the first advantage that, uh, in my opinion, like brings gRPC, that you are able to stream a to-do. Uh, maybe we could uh, stream a list of to-dos, maybe. But in this case, whenever the server wants to push uh, a to-do to, to the client, uh, we are going to, to do it. And the only difference that uh, we need to, to do is to put the stream uh, keyword uh, before the to-do. 
and that will mean that yeah, uh, our response uh, is going to be streamed to the client. Uh, so yeah, if we want to also stream something from the client, we will only need to add the keyword in the in the request, so the client can start sending streams of, of data to the server, and we can do it essentially in the client, in the server, or in both. So we can have like both bidirectional streaming. Uh, yeah, so that's that's really it uh, for a service. We are going to stick with with our original example, and we are only going to stream something from the server. Okay, so yeah, basically this, that's it. I mean, uh, um, when you have to define a model, you will have to create a, a proto file in the products folder. Then you need remember in the in the flow we have in the slides, you need to auto generate your um, your proto files into actual dark classes. So to do that, uh, you need to have the Proto C uh, compiler. And let me grab the, the uh, really quickly, the um, command so we can see it. I, I already, I've, I have already generated the glasses that are here. These are not so readable, but essentially like we will have a, a to-do class with our factory methods. Um, Again, this is auto-generated class, so you know, we don't have to take care uh, about this. But in here, we will find everything needed in order to start using it in our server and in our client. If if we want to auto-generate this again, we can essentially run, run the proto uh, command. Uh, let me go to the proto's project. Sorry, proto's. So here, what we need to do is basically run the proto c uh, command. And this will uh, find all the proto files and put it in the generated classes. OK. So I think, well, this didn't work. But yeah, fortunately, we, all, we already have like the, uh, the classes uh, created. So basically, uh, the last thing I'm doing in this package is to export everything. Uh, so we can go to the library, and in, in here we will export all of the classes. And also we are exporting the gRPC uh, package, so we can use it on the server. Okay, so that's that's it about like the the Protoss um, package. And yeah, this is really fundamental to um, to create this in a separate package, so we can start creating all of our proto files. And then if we go to our server. In our server, what I did was to create um, uh, another Dart project uh, using the console template instead of the package template that we use in the Protoss package. And in here, what you will see is that we have like uh, to import the Protoss package that we did, so we have we can have access to all of these classes. And then uh, we will need to uh, create our server, right? Sorry, uh, it's not here. Is in the bin folder. This is only the default. Uh, maybe we can delete this one. Uh, it's not needed. And we can also, okay, we have like our test. This is like the default implementation of the of the console. So we can skip that. And if we go to the server that is in the bin folder, basically what we are doing here is, uh, yeah, using the protos. Um, package to start using gRPC. Then we define a server with a to-do service that we are going to see what it is. And then we initialize like the server in a port. We are using 8080 by default. And we are just printed like the server is listening in this port, right? So really basic stuff. Uh, and what we need to do right now is to see what the to-do service is, right? Remember that we, we had here our service, our to-do service that is uh, like an interface. I'm going to put it like aside here. And if we go to our tool service, you will see that we are essentially uh, implementing all of these methods that we define in our tool service, right? So we have to extend the tool service base. In this case, we already implement the whole the whole methods. But uh, yeah, if you 
if you don't have like an implementation of your methods, you should uh, override them, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get back to the uh, changes. And in this case, we have our get to do uh, that receive uh, a call and the request, right? So in here, I'm going to close for now the to do's proto. We can we can see that okay for returning a, a to do, we will need the request ID that is uh, that we can grab it from the request. And then we can essentially create a, a hard-coded to-do in our case, but it could be any, any to-do that you can retrieve from anywhere, from a database maybe. And then we simply return the to-do. So this will be like the implementation of the get to-do in the server. And on the other hand, we have like a more complex, uh, let's say, uh, call, because we are, uh, remember, in this call, we are streaming a to-do. And in this case, we simply did like a, a real simple implementation and you could use like uh, something more complex. Maybe you can use like Rx star to start uh, implementing some streams and, and receiving uh, whenever that stream is uh, changed, you can push those changes. But in this case, we only did a well true. And inside the well true, we, we are having a delay of one second. One second, so we, we can actually see what happened in the client. Uh, before it finishes. And simply what we did, uh, again, we, in this case, we uh, create a, an ID that is random. So that, that's it. And then we also create a, a to-do that is uh, hard-coded, right? With, with the random ID, uh, a title, and the completed in false. And then uh, we have to yield the to-do because as we are returning a stream of to-dos, uh, of to-do, sorry, and we don't have to return it. We have to yield it. And the difference also will be that this, instead of the async, it has to be async star, meaning that, yeah, we can yield values as long as the stream wants. And in this case, it will be like, uh, it won't finish because, yeah, we have a, an infinite loop here just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so that's it. That's our whole definition of our to-do service. And if we go back, uh, uh, if you, um, whenever you need to define a service, you will need to specify here. So let's say if we have like a user service, we will need to expose it as part of our server, right? So so that's it for our server. Real real simple. Uh, if we if we would like to run our server, uh, we will have to go to okay. Let let's list all of the of the of the folders and then we will go to our server and here we only need to uh, call dart bin server and this will spin up our server for us so we will be able to uh, basically call those functions from the client one thing that is really nice that i discovered last time i talked about this topic is that you can actually use postman to uh, to call your gRPC uh, methods in your server. So that's a really nice tip. So you don't have to wait to create your client or maybe create a client in Dart to just verify that, that the whole communication is is working correctly. Maybe if you have the time, we, we can also see that in action, like in Postman. But I, I want to cover first the whole, the whole project so we can start, uh, yeah, seeing like the, the whole project working. Okay, so we have our, our, our server listening here. And the last thing we need to check is our client, right? So for creating our, our client, we use Flutter. We have like a basic project uh, in here, and we have different fol folders, uh, uh, different platforms supported like Mac OS, uh, Android, and iOS. You could also use Windows or Linux. Um, but as, uh, as I'm using a Mac, um, yeah, I, I, the, it didn't make sense. So uh, why we are not using the web? Because uh, right now it's not supported for, for the web gRPC. You can do some workarounds or, you, or use a, an Envoy proxy. But yeah, we're going to um, demonstrate this using uh, desktop and mobile. So basically in our Flutter, Flutter project, uh, let's go to our YAML file, right? Because uh, really important file to understand where our dependencies. 
again, we need to uh, import our Protos package that we did. So we can have access to all of the classes. And if we go to our lib folder, we will see that in our main app, main file, we have, uh, we only run our app, right? Uh, we have our material app and basically we are calling a stateful widget that is called my homepage. And here is well all the communication with gRPC will start happening. We are not using like the best practices here because it's like demonstrating uh, purposes, but yeah, you should of course separate all of the communication, maybe in a repository layer and have like a state management um, uh, strategy like blog, for example. But in here, because the example is really simple, uh, we only use a stateful widget and we are going to initialize our client in the stateful widget, okay? So here, what we need to do is to create a, a channel that will uh, serve uh, for communicating with gRPC. So that's what we did. We initialized uh, a late variable uh, channel. And we also have a to-do service client that is a stub. A stub is not, uh, is, is something that is like a fake um, proxy. It's like, it's, it will serve like a proxy to communicate with all of our methods that we have in our gRPC server. So by uh, using the stub, uh, we are going to have access to all of our methods. So in here, we also have our to-do that we need to display uh, once we get our, our, our to-do uh, using the, uni the unary call, right? The get to-do method. And also we have a stream of to-do to -do because remember we have like uh, the get to stream that will start pushing a to-do um, in a period of, of a second uh, in the infinite loop. So we are going to receive it in a stream. And if we go to our init state, we need to initialize all of these variables, right? So in here, what we need to do is just uh, create the client channel. Um, as we are running our server in locally, we are going to use localhost. We are going to specify the port that is the same that uh, we can see here. And uh, this is also like um, the client channel has different options that you can uh, play around. In this case, we're specifying like uh, using the channel credentials insecure, but if you have like some SSL certificates, you could you could definitely put it in here. And also it has another options, uh, the channel options uh, that you can play around such as uh, the idle timeout, the connection timeout, or the coded registry. Uh, these are more like uh, advanced concepts, but yeah, in essence to, start communicating with the gRPC server, you only need to create a client channel. And then we can send this channel to the to do service client. So basically we are initializing our stuff here and the to do service client is the auto generate class that we uh, generated using protobuf. And here we only need to, yeah, initialize the stuff the stuff so we can start calling all of the methods of the gRPC server using the stuff. In this case, we also need to initialize the stream. So once the widget is um, in it, we can also start receiving all of the uh, to do from the stream. And in this case, we're using the get to do by ID request with an ID that is just one because it doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, what we what is going to happen is that when we run the app, uh, we are going to start seeing a lot of to dos in our in our app in our in our UI, right? So let's sk skip this method for now because uh, this will be a different implementation. But in here, what we have ultimately is um, a, a scaffold with an app bar, real simple. Uh, we have a column, and inside the column, we have a stream builder. Uh, because naturally we, we need to receive like a stream of to do. And inside this stream, uh, well, we need to specify which stream, like the, the one that we initialize here. And then inside the, the stream builder, I, I remember to use like a lot of stream builders, like uh, maybe three or four years ago when, when, we, when I was using like mainly like the block pattern with streams, but then as I switch to a, a use like Flutter block, maybe you are not so used to, to use stream builders, but those are great to 
basically receive a stream of information. And yeah, in here, like what we are doing is only receive, well, we, we have to check if there is any data actually in the stream. If not, we can maybe present a loading spinner or in this case, a text. But if we have a, a data, that would mean that we have a, a to do. And we have we can uh, potentially like uh, present it in, in our UI. So we can have like uh, three different texts for the ID, for the title, and for the uh, status uh, of the to-do, if it, where or not is completed. Uh, and that's it. We were able to display the, the whole to-do. So yeah, what I, I would like to show is basically the project um, running. So for doing this, we only need to go to our uh, let's put everything in the same. So basically what we need to do is to, okay, let's clear this. Uh, we will need to go to our, let's, yeah, to our client. And inside our client, yeah, we, we have our Flutter app, so we can run it. And we are going to use uh, the Mac OS device, okay? So, so, so yeah, what we are going to see in macOS basically is how uh, our server will start pushing uh, random to-dos to our client and our client is, on, is going to only display that. And that will demonstrate the whole server size streaming, right? So let's wait till this run, just really quick. Oh, I have it in my another monitor, so let's go here. Okay, so here we can see uh, the example in action. Let's put it maybe here. So yeah, what we are seeing here is that the server is uh, sending messages to, to the client uh, using a stream. And yeah, the, 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 the Flutter app is only displaying those uh, in a period of a second that is receiving all the messages. So yeah, this is like, uh, in essence, how like server side uh, streaming works using gRPC. We could also uh, only uh, use a, a unary call to just get a simple to do and that's it. In this case, we will uh, only need to uh, call the get to method using an await and that will return something. And then we can set the state to, to this to do. Um, but yeah, maybe we can uh try to do this uh, in here we have like the floating action button and we have the get to do so if we do this we are going to see we are not going to see and uh, nothing happening but uh, maybe if we if we, in, instead of having a stream builder we have okay let's copy this because this is our this is our um yeah now i have to copy the, the whole column we're going to return the column and we are going to forget about the stream builder so because we are only uh returning the um the to do that is a uh, call in the unary call and the to do would be this one that we have it here right so if we go here what we need to do is to, okay, we can actually check before if this to do is empty. So let's, let's check if this to do is, is not null. And if not, we can, we can use uh, this to do to display it. And else we can uh, do what we were doing like before that is mainly presenting a text with a, with a loading, right? So we can put text loading. Oh, here is not the, the end of the, it will be here. So else we can put it here. Uh, so it will be a text and yeah, this will be just loading. So let me see here if everything is right. So here we have like our column, right? And, oh, because we have like a column in here also. Okay, this is only to demonstrate like the, the use of, um, so we, we have to put it in here. 
Right, so let's use the yeah, brackets here. So actually we had to put it in oh in here. Right. So let me see. Okay, this should work. And in this, maybe you can put Okay, I think I forgot the, the brackets, but. Um, sorry, I think it should be after the column with the yellow bracket. Yeah, after the column with, oh, after here. On the 98. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm gonna try like with the, perfect, thanks. So here we have here. Yeah, this is just to demonstrate like the, the article. Uh, it wasn't like part of the, so here we can put a const. And yeah, if we save it here, what we can, we can hot restart. We are go not going to see anything till we put the increment. So here we have like the ID, the tool with the ID. And if, if we hit the, um, the plus button, the add button, we are going to see a different uh, to so yeah, this is like in essence how it will work like uh, the unary call instead of the streaming. Okay, so perfect. Let, let me go back to the presentation real quick. Um, okay, so maybe I can talk about some conclusions uh, to wrap the the day. So basically, when when we are using real um, gRPC, we are able to use uh, real time communication. We we saw like. Uh, we have like a bi-directional streaming. We saw like how we push things from the server or only use a unary call. Uh, but this is really, really cool because you are able to do this real-time communication between the client and the server. And then another reason for using like gRPC will be the performance. We, we didn't talk so much about, but the whole thing about using protocol buffers is that it's a really efficient communication because you don't have to send uh, essentially uh, JSON and this this information uh, uh, travel in the in the wire like in the form of a binary so it's really uh, lightweighted and it's really efficient because imagine if you have like mobile clients that are not so <coughs> don't have like so uh, much capabilities you will send like more efficient uh, messages to them and you don't, you don't have to like spend time parsing the JSON and so on uh, so yeah, this could be something maybe that we don't think about because like we actually don't experience that. But yeah, uh, it's, it's a more efficient communication. Then we have like the thing that is language agnostic. So we can potentially use any programming language. We use Dart today, but you can auto-generate from the product buff uh, definition like for any other language. And that's really nice. And we have this thing about strongly typed contracts, right? So yeah, when working with uh, the client and the server and making changes, we are going to realize those changes immediately. We don't have to wait till something breaks. Let's say we are working with uh, a REST API and someone changed something in the backend. We don't have to wait till that uh, breaks the front end, right? Because we will uh, be immediately aware of that. And for next steps, I highly recommend you to uh, go to the documentation of gRPC. It's really nice. Have a lot of information, and also the documentation from for the product buff that is separated. And I also wrote a blog about this. If you want to try it yourself and and read the blog uh, at the same time, that is called "How to Build Real Time Apps Using Flutter and gRPC." Is um, also presenting this uh, the same, almost the same. Um, project, but it's using a list of users instead of uh, to do. And and yeah, um, you can always like ask in the community and groups. Uh, I think like this is really valuable, uh, valuable like uh, asking in Google groups, for example, or even in Reddit or GitHub or, or Slack. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that that's, that's it for today. Uh, thanks to everyone to be here. And here you have you will find my social networks, um, also for Flutter Uruguay. Uh, yeah, it was really nice to be here. Maybe we can, if you have any question, we can answer or even chat.
about the, the topic and what we did today. Okay, so let me go back to the chat. Okay, uh, I think Anderson was uh, saying hello world, <laughs> great. And and yeah, we don't have like so many questions in the Q&A, but if, if you like to uh, even comment something or if you have some doubt, maybe you can, you can definitely ask. Okay, yeah, Mike. Yeah, I'm just wondering that, uh, I mean, we all seen GRPC in, in, in action and we know that it's very efficient and fast, but um, how do you see it positioning as uh, using it and uh, rolling your own basically what we're doing if you, if you use it typically compared as, you know, using Firebase or Superbase right. with its streaming capabilities as well. Of course, there you have, you know, you have to roll up, serialize your JSONs, et cetera, or, or GraphQL, but, but anyway. But how how do you how do you think about the overhead for actually implementing this and uh, hosting your own little backend for it and all these kind of things for smaller projects? Right. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think that ultimately, like uh, things like Firebase under the hood are using gRPC in some of their modules, so yeah. this is like using exactly what they are using. But but yeah, I mean, in terms of creating your own backend, I guess that. Yeah, this is represents a, a new challenge because uh, whenever you play around with backend as a service like Firebase or Superbase or Amplify, this is like done for you and it's really easy to integrate. I guess that if you start using, and the cool thing about uh, yeah gRPC is that you can use product buff and that um, in a way saves saves you time to create all of the communication and all of the even the dark classes, right, that you need to create because this is auto-generated and that can really save you a lot of time. And yeah. in terms of, yeah, managing the server, I guess that, yeah. Uh, you would still have to hook up this to a backend database and things like right. that of course, yeah, as well. Of so there's, there's a lot more than what we just saw now. Of course, yeah, we only uh, uh, have, have this uh, the surface, but yeah, of course, uh, yeah. I was only demonstrating like simple hard coded data, but you could still yeah. need to. You would, you would need an ORM in, in right. your back to your objects to a relationship database or whatever you want to do. Course, I, I think like the, the discussion will be like ultimately if you are willing to create your own backend or if you yeah. will want to use a backend as a service, right? And of course, you can always split things up. I mean, if you have something that is very time critical and needs to be fast and efficient, like a very interactive chat or whatever, this, this right. is uh, you can just do one of the APIs for it and do the rest with something else. I mean, with that is not time critical. Yeah, of course, definitely. And um, and yeah, I think like another use case will be um, yeah, maybe in in things like microservices. And uh, this is mm. really. Uh, common pattern because yeah, uh, imagine like every service even implementing its own language. So yeah, having the flexibility of using protobuf, it's really efficient uh, in the communication and also like in having a single source of truth. Truth. And and yeah, we have we have another question here about the size of proto data. So yeah, in terms of the size, um, what you need to actually, uh, I mean, it's. It's really more efficient because of the size. It's not as big as sending a JSON data because you have to specify a lot of the headers and so on. And in terms of the size, I would say that maybe it's like at least eight times uh, less than, than a JSON uh, response. Uh, but also you have to take in care that you, you, you can put like as much properties as you want in the message. If you like to put like more than a hundred um, properties, maybe you, you have to split your messages. But yeah, those are some constraints that you have. But yeah, it's really efficient because mainly because of the size. Um, one drawback would be like uh, that. Yeah, it's not so readable as a JSON request, right? Because if if we inspect the actual message, that will be binary. And yeah, in, in terms of using REST. Um, sorry, using JSON that is highly readable because you are sending ultimately a, a string. Um, 
So yeah, Federico Perez is saying in the chat, I want to say thank you and let you know that it was a great event. It shows how Dart can also be used not only inside Flutter. And then in, in, yeah, in Spanish, he's saying, muchas gracias y espero seguir viendo charlas así. Saludos de Colombia. So he, he, he's saying uh, hi from Colombia. So yeah, thanks, Federico. I hope to see, uh, see you in future, future events. OK, so perfect. Maybe we can wrap it up. Um, I hope this, this was useful. If you are um, if you wanted to know about something about gRPC or you're thinking about using it, this, uh, this is uh, really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I highly suggest you explore the documentation and getting familiar with this. That is really awesome. OK, thank you, guys. Uh, it was uh, awesome to have you here. Thanks, Rafael. It's nice. Okay. Thanks. Bye, bye. Thanks. Bye. bye.